Hi, yeah, welcome to our channel and today we are going to talk about a world order where everything is owned by few people. Just imagine all the wealth of the world is in few hands. What kind of world order it would look like? Just few people having all the money and all the other are struggling to live their life. Will it be a correct world order? Will people be happy in this kind of situation? Well, let us study and find out in this video. I hope you this video would be liked by you and if you like it you can press the like share and subscribe button now if we talk about introduction to capitalism capitalism is an economic system which is based on private ownership of means of production and the market economy that means few people who are not related to government they own the means of production so everything that is produced and available in the market it is controlled by few people because they own it in capitalist system individuals and businesses own and control the resources they produce the goods and services they compete with each other to sell those goods and services now the primary goal of capitalism is only to generate profit and no welfare the individuals are free to make economic decisions based on their self interest so there is no government there is no welfare there is no thought about poor people no everyone is working for their own self everyone is producing and selling and they are not bothered about other people this type of economic system is called capitalism now capitalism is often contrasted with other economic system such as socialism and communism now if we talk about these systems which is socialism and communism it is mostly wherein the community owns the means of production that is not one individual or group of individuals but the entire community the entire population owns the means of production the economic decision in this type of economy is taken with the objective of social welfare however capitalism is characterized by decentralized decision making process every individual and business can make their own economic decision in capitalism now before we get deep into capitalism let's quickly learn about the market system there are two key elements of market system one is supply and the other is demand in the market system prices are determined by the interaction of supply and demand So if there is huge demand and there is less supply the price of the goods and services will increase right the other important factor is price determination the prices of the products are determined by the law of supply and demand which again is influenced by various factors such as the availability of raw material the the amount of production which is happening the political scenario so these are the factors which determine the price of a product and this determines the availability of the product in the market so we have learned about supply and demand price determination now let's quickly understand what is market efficiency well in market system competition among producers and consumers help to promote efficiency by encouraging production of goods and services that are in demand and at a low cost the role of the government is to regulate these markets why because these markets rely on free market forces the government plays a role in regulating markets to ensure that they function properly just imagine if you have a market which is self driven every person is making decision for their own self interest will there be anything left for the public welfare for the public interest so people who are costly i mean rich they will buy all the costly stuff and the prices of the products will increase but what about the poor person who wants to eat and make his daily life living he'll not be able to get that product Now if we talk about capitalism and labor the labor market is dynamic in capitalist economy the labor market is characterized by supply and demand the demand for labor is determined by the type of and the level of economic activity and the supply of labor is determined by the size and the productivity of labor force the second aspect is labor exploitation and worker rights critics of capitalism argue that the profit motive can lead to labor exploitation as employers may seek to minimize labor cost by paying low wages or of a poor working conditions also there are unions and collective bargaining there is an impact of technological advancement on labor Now if you talk about capitalism in business the corporate organization and governance in capitalism are typically organized and owned by shareholders and managed by board of directors in capitalism entrepreneurship and small businesses are often promoted technological advancements are a driving force behind innovation and economic growth 
in capitalist economies. Critics of capitalism argue that the profit motive can lead to unethical behavior by businesses, such as degradation of environment, labor exploitation and corruption. Does capitalism give rise to inequality? The answer is yes. The income and the wealth distribution is uneven. There are few people who control the production of all the goods and services and they determine the prices of these goods and services. Also, the critics of capitalism argue that inequality can limit social mobility and opportunity, making it difficult for poor people and disadvantaged sections to succeed in their life. Also, education and human capital are important factors in determining the economic success under capitalism. Those with higher level of education or skills will earn more money and will get greater access to opportunities. Government policies are there to ensure that the inequality is reduced. There are also certain international trades and global globalization rules, such as having comparative advantage. Again, the concept of international trade is based on the concept of comparative advantage. The countries can benefit from specializing in the production of goods and services that they can produce more efficiently than other countries. Also, we have a concept of free trade versus protectionism. Now, free trade refers to unrestricted movement of goods and services across international borders. Protectionism, in the other sense, refers to policies that restrict trade in order to protect domestic industries. Also, multinational corporations and foreign investment are companies that operate in multiple countries and they play an important role in international trade and globalization. Global economic governance and institutions. International trade and globalization are governed by a complex system of institutions, including World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund and World Bank. So if I have to give certain disadvantages or critique of capitalism, well, the most important and the negative part of capitalism is that it breeds to inequality. There are a lot of environmental aspects as well. It is not sustainable. Now, the alternatives to capitalism include socialism, communism and cooperatives. This is what needs to be flourished and encouraged in a country like India.